Our next white dot syndrome in the ureitis series is serpiginous choroidopathy. Starting with introduction, serpiginous choroidopathy or choroiditis is usually bilateral, though asymmetrical. Inflammation occurs in the outer retina and choriocapillaries. It typically occurs in middle age, affects men uh, more frequently than women and is associated with HLA B7. The disease is generally recurrent over years with a relatively poor prognosis. TB uveitis can give a similar clinical picture, which is a pigeonoid. Clinical features include uh, symptoms, uh, which uh, are initially unilateral blurring of central vision, scotoma, or metamorphopsia. On examination, there is anterior uveitis and vitritis, uh, which are common but are usually mild. Fundus examination shows active lesions, uh, which are gray-white and may remain active for several months before becoming scalloped and atrophic. Uh, these lesions, they are quite prominent. They are here in the first figure. This is an active lesion in the early disease. and. As we can see that the disease typically starts around the optics and extends gradually though a variant starting at the central macula in 5% of the population is recognized. In the second picture, we can see the extension of disease around uh, the macular area here. In a snake like fashion. Hence the name, the name Serpigenoid. And ultimately, recurrence uh, is usually contiguous with or adjacent to existing areas eventually this resulting in extensive chorioretinal atrophy which is shown in the last picture here with extensive atrophy here now uh, choroidal neovascularization is a complication which occurs in 15 to 35 percent of people along with subretinal fibrosis and preretinal uh, neovascularization. Tuberculosis should be excluded, uh, especially in the endemic areas, and afterwards, a fluorescent angiography of active lesion shows hypofluorescence and late hyperfluorescence. Uh, this is the late phase which shows hyperfluorescence of the area around the disc in this figure. Uh, the arrow is already pointing towards it. The other uh, test that can be done is endocyanin green and geography of uh, active lesion. Uh, it reveals marked hypofluorescence throughout all phases of angiogram. intravenous steroids may control activity. A variety of immunosuppressives and infliximab may be effective alone or in combination. So uh, that's it with the subhygenoid choroidopathy and we are uh, concluding the subject here. If you like the lecture please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.